reality hits the atmosphere because the devil wants to control the finances. You got to think over, you could, there's certain things that you touch on, you could just cut it. You could just feel it in the air because it's such a stronghold, you know what I'm saying? But that's why we got to be led by the spirit and move in the spirit, by the spirit. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? Praise God. So even, even throughout the worship, like when she was transparent and shared what she shared, like the Holy Spirit was all, he was already giving me a word while I was worshiping about people losing expectation, about people losing hope. And in this time, in this season, man, it, it, it's really rough. Some people looking and they seeing people's highlight reels and they seeing people's pictures of their families and all that. And they might not have family or they might or just went through losing a loved one and they seeing those things and then it's not bringing hope and it's not it's losing expectation and then you start thinking like if God's real then why is this and why is that man I'm here to tell you he is so real and that's why the Bible says to meditate on those things that are praiseworthy because the meditation of your mind will take you to a place you don't want to go because the carnal mind is enmity to the spirit of God. There's no spirit involved in the carnality. So when you're meditating on something that's not praiseworthy and pleasing to the Lord, you're just meditating on the thought the enemy has given you because he's the power and prince of the air. I don't want nothing from that coward devil. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now that, now that was laying yeah. So, so, so the word, these are the days. Tap your neighbor say, these are the, these are the days. Or, 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 or these them days, or this, that, depending on where you're from or where you're at. But so God completely interrupted the series that I was doing. We was in, what was the name of the series? We have purpose. You have purpose? Or was it just purpose? purpose. <laughs> it was all of that. That's how you know people are just receive in different ways. Amen. But yeah, we have purpose. You have purpose. Purpose. You know what I'm saying? But as he gave me this word, interrupting it at the last minute, because I had fully prepared, we was going to talk about Joseph and his purpose and how everything that he went through was leading him toward his purpose, even his persecution, even him getting beat up, even him getting hated on, all of that was a part of pushing him into his purpose, amen, into that place, and he never stopped dreaming, and it was real good, and maybe I'll preach on it another day, but the Holy Spirit just went through and said, nah, that, that's what you thought you was preaching, but these are the days. I said, okay, okay, and then he showed me the activation of purpose, that the word was a living word. How many of y'all showed up Wednesday under the bridge? I watch people move in purpose, amen? People serving, serving selflessly, amen? Sitting down, eating with the people that was under the bridge, praying with them, and we had a real good time, and we was praising, worshiping, we was rapping, we was sharing testimony, word went forward, altar call went forward, fellowship went forward. It wasn't just about them. How many know God always does more than you can see with your natural eye? You think you're going to do one thing for somebody else, but it's a double-edged sword because it fulfills you in the process. That's how you know it's the Holy Spirit because flesh wants to be served. The Spirit comes to serve, amen? And when you serve, you get filled with the Spirit. Mm, come on, somebody. That's better than turkey and stuffing. What kind of stuffing, though? I don't know. Man, all right, let me get back. Let me get back in it. So as he was saying that with, the, with the series, these are the days, and he's talking about purpose, and he was saying, like, I can, I can motivate you through words. I can inspire you through actions, but only Jesus Christ gives salvation. Wow. It, this is not for motivational purposes only. This is not so you could be inspired to be the best you. This is about salvation in Christ Jesus. And in that salvation, you receive redemption. And through that redemption, you receive power. Amen. But perspective got to stay in order. It got to be about Jesus plus nothing. Amen. See, see, Islam in Islam, they, they say that there's a there's a messenger for every community. And uh, yeah, his name is Jesus Christ. The son, you heard me, that died for our sins. God manifested himself in the flesh and walked over here and showed us how to do it. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. Yes, that's the messenger for every community because he didn't just come for the Jews. He came for the Gentiles too. 
Amen? So when we look at things that are going on and the headlines that are going on, and really you got to do your research. And really as Christians, we need to be mindful when we hit share. We need to do our due diligence and we need to fact check. We got to make sure we're sharing things that actually happen and are credible. Because what happens is so much fake news gets shared, it makes people numb to the truth because they don't know what's true. When I seen the, uh, the 200 Muslims had the dream, I kind of wrote it off the first time because I'm so used to seeing things like that that are not even real. When you go to the source, it's not even a credible magazine. And when you go looking, it has to be confirmed by at least three or four sources, right? So then uh, has anybody seen that they said the Nile River turned to blood? Okay, that was a river in Chile. Okay. You, you got to do your fact check. There's a river that goes there. It turns the blood red. And they, they took pictures and tried to say it was the now. Just trying to, and that's just people just trying to clickbait and get views and do whatever they're trying to do because they're probably selling advertisements on their sites or whatever. But us as Christians, we need to make sure what we're sharing is credible. It is facts. It did happen. We need to pray about all things, do our own research and see. And this story was actually by an accredited author. It also actually came from several different sites that are credible sites so as I was praying and it was talking about the Muslims coming to Christ and I was just thinking about where the Muslims derive from and we need to be versed that way when we have conversations we're not like oh I don't know <laughs> no yeah because then somebody comes to you with this and then you look like they then you start how many know when you don't know what you're talking about you can tell but when you know what you're talking about you can tell Tell me a boldness and the authority don't come upon you when you know what you're talking about. When we talking about Jesus, I get excited. I got to like, drink. Well, calm down. How am I going to be calm talking about the, the king that died for me, that rose from the grave, that took upon my sins, that I don't have to go to hell, that he took my... You think I could just talk about that? Quiet? Oh, Jesus is real. Man, boy, Jesus is real. You tripping. You know hear I me? Mean? Oh, excuse me. I get excited about my Jesus. <laughs> so as I'm looking at it and looking at the, the Ishmael, you know, Abraham, you know, Abraham, Ishmael was Abraham's son from Hagar, right? And, and this is where this nation come from. And then just looking at it, man, as I go, I, I'm, I'm going to break that down. But I remember I studied Islam when I was in prison. Am I the only one? Come on, I know, I know several of y'all that were in prison. <laughs> I see you back there, Keesey. <laughs> okay, I didn't even know. Now I know. Amen. So, you know, and I, I studied it, and it was appealing to my flesh. And when you look at Ishmael in the Bible, it was said in Genesis that he would be wild, that he would be at war. You know, it was spoken. And then looking at that, it already it fed, it fed my flesh and not my spirit. So now it fed my carnality because it was a lot of book knowledge. George Jackson, why is my head turned on backwards? And just look at the hadiths. It was a, it, it was a lot of it was a lot of knowledge. It wasn't wisdom because the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. It was a lot of head knowledge. And then the enemy is so strategic. Can I tell you, the enemy will strategically place people in your life that are in sin. Okay. And through your, through your Christianity, your, 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 feel, your love for people, you try to embrace these people, but they're sent on an assignment from Satan. You got to understand and you got to discern all things. Amen. When Jesus sent them out by twos and he said, when they don't want to receive the peace you come with, dust your feet off. You heard me? And keep walking. You dig? So we got to understand these things because we don't want to be ignorant to the devil's devices. A kingdom connection will always add on to your life. It's not going to pull you down. And it's not for you to stick your nose up like you're better than somebody. No, it's on you to get built up and you to have a confidant, to you to have a brother and sister in Christ so you could go back and pull this person out. Because what happens is if it's just y'all two, y'all playing tug of war and everybody's going to end up in a ditch. Okay. So, so looking at it, so, so when I was in prison, one of my homeboys, he was the imam. So he was the head of the Muslim religion over there. He had so much book knowledge, and he knew, and it, it was set somebody that was familiar to me when I was upstate. So then I started just reading the books. I was in, I was on, uh, I was in the working cell block anyway, so that we could just go to work, and then we had to be locked up in the cell. So I'm reading all of these books. It's appealing. I, I was like, 
eye for an eye, two for a two. I'm about that. It's an uh, uprising. I'm about that too. It was about rebelling against the system. I'm about that too. So I'm like, all right, uh, man, I'm ready. So then he was saying, he was making sure I knew the hadith, and then I was going to take my shahad. So that morning, I, we, I, we went to the field and work hard, and they had a different line pusher. And long story short, me and him ended up getting in a fight. I had three years, I, I had two years left on a five year sentence. I got into it with the got in a fight with this man. They hit the they hit the beep, the beep on me. They shot the guns in the field. Boom! Brought me fully restrained me. I'm sitting in the back. I'm waiting to go to cell block A, and I didn't pray to Muhammad. I didn't pray to Allah. I prayed to Jesus. I said, Jesus, if you real, don't let me get rebooked. Don't let me get rebooked, Lord. And I, I like I'm. I didn't want to do five more years on the battery on the officer. I had already been down three years. I had two years left. I was ready to go home. So I, when I tell you I was praying to Jesus, I was, I was praying to Jesus. So then I go to cell block A, and you can't tell me, God, you know, there's no such thing as coincidence, right? So I'm waiting for my write-up, and y'all know that I've ever been to the cell block. I'm glad a lot of y'all don't know what I'm talking about right now, but some of y'all do know what I'm talking about. So the sake, for, the, for the sake of those that do know, when you own a cell block, you can hear the keys rattle, so you know the deputy's coming down the hall. So as soon as I would hear the key, keys rattle, I start praying. Lord, please don't let me get rebooked. Lord, when I get this right up, Lord, please. And I'm going in prayer. And then he's just making his round, sign the book, going back. You, got my, you didn't get my right up yet? No, I ain't get you right up. All right. So then all day. Now, I got into it first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning at work call. I didn't get my right up till shift change at 6 o'clock. So I was praying that whole day in that cell. So then when, when he finally got to my cell, he's going to sign this right up. Man, I'm praying. It's a little bitty cell, but it felt so long to get to the cell hats to sign the right up. And when I went to sign the right up, it was a, a rule three defiance. It was a rule 28 aggravated work offense. And it was a rule five aggravated disobedience. No battery. The defiance was for cursing him out. Like he didn't write me up for a battery on all. Man, I praised Jesus so hard. And I, I said, I would never play with that Muslim stuff again. And then, and then they had to hear me on the south. Like, bro, that Muslim stuff ain't real. Jesus, Christ, look, Jesus, Allah didn't do it, bro. Man, Paco, bro, no, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Allah didn't do it, bro. It was Jesus, you know. And I was telling, I told the whole cell block. And I still... I still to this day, I share that testimony with some Muslims and some of them end up giving their life to Christ. I don't know if some of y'all remember, one of my partners came in here with a kufi fresh out of prison and he took that kufi off, amen, crying and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, amen. Like this is what God's doing in the season because he loves them too. But maybe if we can understand them a little more, we're not going to feel like they're the ops. We're not going to feel like they're the opposition. We're not going to feel like we're at war with them because the Bible says we're not at war with flesh and blood. It's demonic principalities. So when you begin to have a heart for God's people, you won't just pass them up. Amen. 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 So then that goes back to purpose. Amen. Genesis 16, 1 and 2. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, see now the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. In the chapter before that's when God promised the blessing over Abraham that his descendants will be as the stars in the sky, that he would make his name great. So here you go in the next chapter. See, she lost expectation and she lost hope because the promise was to come through their offspring. And she felt like God closed her womb because she couldn't have children. So now she goes with a plan B. Look, with God, there's no plan B. It's plan A, alpha. There's no, there's no plan B. Amen? When God speaks, don't be like, well, if this doesn't happen, then I can do this. No, this is going to happen, and I'm going to stand on it because God says so. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So looking at the chapter, hey, looking at chapter 12 is when he said, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Then chapter 15 is when he said, come, he said like, this is the West Bank translation. He's like, come on, come take a walk, Abel. He said, look up. He said, count them, count them stars. As many as those is going to be your offspring, and I'm going to make your name great. So now you have, look, 86 years old, 
Her womb's closed up. She said, God, uh, God has closed in my womb. Now she's saying what God did, like she knows God, like she can instruct God, like she knows God's plan. Who am I talking to right now? You stop expecting and you stop having hope because you think you know what God will do and won't do. Come on, mm, come on somebody. So, so let's read. Now, Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, see now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then it goes on to when, 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 uh, when she conceived, she started to look down upon Sarai. It said, it said, it said, in the scriptures, it said she despised her. And not despised in essence like she was hating on her. It was more of her exalting herself over her. So you got to put yourself in the text. In that time period, to give birth was meant you was blessed from the Lord. So for her to not be able to conceive, it was like she wasn't blessed. So now here she is like, yeah, now I conceive. Now I'm having a baby. So you know where that would have went. So then she goes to Abram and says, look, can I deal with her harshly? Because she tripping. So he said, deal with her harshly. So she dealt with her harshly. Next thing you know, she got tired of being dealt with harshly. And then she runs away. So then she runs away while she's pregnant. And the angel comes down and the angel tells her, look, go back where you came from. I will provide for you over there. See, you got to be careful when you don't like the way God's providing. He's Jehovah Jireh. You got to be careful when you want to hurry up, give up and quit and run away from the place God called you to be. When I was working a job that I extremely did not like, I remember I was like, Man, I'm about to quit, man. God, you're going to supply all of my needs according to my riches and glory. Like, that's your word. I was moving and shaking, doing all of this, and then I'm going to this job, and I'm the helper, doing what nobody wants to do. And I'm like, I'm about to quit this job. You're going to supply all of my needs. I'm your child. I'm out here doing your work, you know. And then he's like, you can't force my hand. And I was like, wow. See, I could have did it. And all I would have did was end up going back around the mountain. If it wasn't that job, it would have been another job. And I would have dealt with the same things that I was dealing with on that job because there was something inside of me that he was using that job to squeeze out of me. Oh, but we can get in our flesh and say, man, I'm gone. And, then, and he spoke, look, go back over there and submit because that's where I'm going to that's where I'm going to supply. And she went back. Let's keep reading. I'm glad y'all asking me all these questions. <laughs> Genesis 21, I could preach to myself, boy, I'm telling you. That's how I started, though. Praise <laughs> God. Genesis 21, 8 to 13. It doesn't matter who listens. I know he's always listening. So, and sometimes I just needed to preach to myself. Right. Am I the only one? No. Okay. Praise God. We got some real ones. Genesis 21, 8 to 13. So the child grew and was weaned, and Abram made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah, now, now I give you this, the name change because now they already received the blessing. Now they had the Isaac that was going to be the way he's going to make his name great through and all of that. So the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah said, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, scoffing. Therefore, she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. That's where you get the nation of Islam from. Okay. Now. When he tells her, all right, go ahead and get rid of her, let her go. Now, you got to understand, this was them not waiting on the Lord, not being patient, losing expectations. So now, all right, just have her through her. We're going to be blessed this way. No. So this was, this was basically a consequence of not being patient. Okay? So now, he said, all right, go ahead, let them go. I'm going to take care of yours. 
So they go. Now, so then I, I was wrestling with it because then I'm like, as I'm reading the scriptures, it was he was a lad. He gave her the lad. He gave her the boy. She went. She left. Let, 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 let's keep reading. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread in the skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it to the boy, to Hagar, and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba, and the water in the skin was used up. And she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat, so she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, with ails you, Hagar. Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. Now, reading that, look at how she gave him the lad. She, she put him down by a bush, went a bow shot away, because she didn't want to hear him die. Do, am I the only one that just pictures that as a little boy? Right? Because then I thought, like, man, like, man, that's, that's wild. Like, just because the boy was scoffing at Isaac, you know what I'm saying? But then looking deeper into the text, Abraham had Ishmael when he was 86 years old. Abraham had Isaac when he was 100 years old. That's 14 years, okay? That's still pretty young. But when I think about what I was doing at 14, at looking at overseas, that's considered an adult. You're, you're going to give an account for your action. But still, it was after the feast of the weaning. So in biblical times, the weaning occurred between two and five years. So basically, Ishmael was either 16 to 19 years old, so he knew exactly what he was doing. But when you look at the rift between Islam and Christianity, between Islam and the Israelites, and you look at that, you see that same orphan spirit. You see that same jealousy. See, Sarah seen the jealousy within him and said, he's not going to be heir with my child. So when you see the war going on, now watch this. Islam, Muslims cannot call God Abba. They can't, they can't call God the Father. What, I don't know what this is for. So, so when you look at in Islam, that's not their father. God is not their father. God is not their dad. They're simply servants. So they don't have the relationship that we have, and they don't have the nourishment of being a child of God. So you wonder why they're so hard, because it's all about works, because you don't have your father. So now you're trying to prove yourself to this God that you're here to serve. So since I'm a servant, i got to work, 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 work. And that's all about works. They think they're going to work themselves in their way into heaven. And it's not about words. It's about relationship. But watch this. So she thought she was going to die. So he was actually between 16 and 19 years old. So look at the picture a little different. Now they have no strength. They ran out of water. They ran out of food. They're basically, she's basically holding her son up. Come on, women, y'all know when it comes to y'all kids, y'all get some supernatural strength. Don't play with mama kid, you hear me? Look, look, I know my mama, my mom, man, my mom, I ain't even going there. <laughs> my mom ain't played behind me. Right? So she's holding him and let him down so basically he can't even move no more. He can't drink. He's not drinking. He's not eating. They think they about to die of starvation. Your body can only go so long without water. You could go a long time without, without food, but water is a whole, nother, a whole nother thing. So she lays him down, walks a bow shot away because in her head they both about to die and she don't want to hear her son grasp his last breath. So they then gave up. And then the angel speaks. And when the angel speaks, the Bible says, he opened up her eyes and showed her a well that she was right next to. Can I tell you in this season, God is opening up the eyes of those that don't know that the well has always been there. 
The Muslims are seeing Jesus in dreams. He's showing them the well. And look, the well was already there. It didn't say Jesus made a well come through. He didn't say Jesus made a well spring out the ground. It says he opened her eyes. So she was blind to the provision that she was already in the midst of. Who am I talking to in here? You, you, you're going through it, but you don't know your provision is right there. Look at it. Look at it right there. Look at it. He's changing colors and everything. You hear me? It's right there. Amen? You just got to open your eyes up. But look, watch when her eyes open up, when she cried out. When was the last time you cried out? Not to Facebook. Not to Instagram. Not to your partner. Not to your mama. When's the last time you cried out to the Lord? In, in desperation. Like, God, I need you. I don't care. I, I don't need nothing. I need you. This relationship, this purpose got to begin with your love for the Lord. You can't want nothing more than you want him. And in that desperation of knowing I need him every day that I breathe, my eyes is open and there's a well right next to me that when I drink from, I'll never thirst again. Thank y'all for coming out. God bless you. <laughs> what? We got a little more time? So look what the headlines are reading. The Lord is working unbelievable miracles in the Israel-Hamas war. Hundreds of Muslims all dreamed of Christ on the same night. Praise God. So, this is another headline. Supernatural move of God in Gaza as hundreds reportedly meet Jesus in dreams. What? Over the past two days, we have ministered to hundreds of fathers who have lost fathers who have lost most, if not all, of their children in the war. As we moved these men to safety, we fed them, washed their clothes, and began to read the Bible to them. Sharing the way of peace through Jesus. Then a big miracle happened last night. Jesus appeared to more than 200 of them in their dreams. They have come back to us to learn more from God's word and are asking how to follow Jesus. Lacona quoted from the Christian ministry. Lacona is a professor at Houston Christian University and has written several books, including The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus. See, God knew exactly who to place there. And Paul meets Muhammad. Former Muslim turned Christian apologist Nabil Karashi once wrote, Mike Licona was instrumental in my journey out of Islam to Christ. While I was a Muslim college student, Mike invited me to his home regularly to discuss the historicity of Jesus, death on the cross, and, the, and his resurrection from the dead. The evidence Mike presented was so compelling it formed the keystone of my conversation. Since then I have seen his work so powerfully impact thousands with historical evidence of the Christian faith. These are the days. These are the days that was prophesied in the book of Joel, that was spoken in the book of Acts, that was quoting the book of Joel. That was spoken in the New Testament, quoting the Old Testament. And, man, hold up. Let, let, let me show y'all what I'm talking about. Acts 2, 15 to 21. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. He said, this was Joel. These are the days Joel was talking about. And it shall come to pass in the last day, say, these are the days. In the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Say, no more excuses. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. It was the fathers that received the dream. And I'm not talking about 2,000 years ago. I'm talking about 2023, okay? The young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men, well, 
And on my men servant and on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever, come, mm, come on, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall shall be saved. Jesus. Man, this got to be so real to you. See, when I, when I first realized this was the really real real, and I was reading it, and I said, and I came across that shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus. Je Jesus. I wanted to make sure. Amen. If this Bible's not coming alive to you like that, you're not reading it right. You hear me? Now, 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 your carnality could get in the way. Life will get in the way. But that's why you got to push through that and put on the mind of Christ Jesus and say, no, this is facts. Let me, I need something, God. I'm going through it right now. Boom. Five, 15 foot of Libra, Libra wood. Like, I need a word. Ten, ten, what was all these numbers? And he's saying, because I'm in the details. I'm in the instructions. This whole book is what brings salvation. Amen. Not when you take one scripture out. Well, I said that prayer at the end. I surely did. And I confessed him. But did you do it with your heart? Come on, that's good. Because if you did it with your heart, your feet going to change. Oh, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You going to walk different. Amen. You can't get filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's not evidence in your life. Come on. You get full of those other spirits, there's evidence that you're full of those other spirits. You, you walking different, you slurring, you talking different, right? You can't even operate right, right? When you get full of the Holy Spirit, you walk different, you talk different. And new languages, you will speak, amen, evidence that you fill with his spirit. Man, he wants to bring you from glory to glory. The devil, he wants, to, he wants to stagnate you. He wants to cripple you. And look, and the devil is patient. He'll take his time with you. He'll, all right, I'll get you to do that. All right, she's doing it. All right, I'll do that. All right, all right do that. Look, it also says, sin waited at the door and his desire is to have you. See, sin can't kick your door in. You got to open it. And once it cracks, it's waiting for that crack. Boom, and it's in there. No, no, no. We got work to do. These are the days that was prophesied in this book. Amen. We got work to do. They got people that don't know Jesus and you know Jesus. That's why you're here. Amen. So you got to come to a point in your walk to say, you know what? All I want is Jesus. Jesus is more than enough. I don't need this. I don't need that to have fun. I got more. I have more fun now than I ever had in my life. And I done did some drugs and I done drank some liquor, you hear me? And I, but I ain't never had this much fun in my life. Hey, look, tap in there, ain't no high like the most high. Well, welcome to One Accord Ministries, amen. Yeah. <laughs> they got you saying, ain't, ain't, all right, so let's keep reading. Let's, and it's free. Indeed. Oh, hold on, I was about to go. I was going, I was going somewhere. Okay, so check it out, so check it out. I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, sons and daughters shall prophesy, young men will have visions, old men will dream dreams, and on my men's servant and my maid servant I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. So basically in these days, these are the days he removes class. It doesn't matter what class you're in, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter your education, it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor, on a maid servant, the men's servant, none of that matters. In these days, he's pouring his spirit upon all flesh so nobody has an excuse amen because the spirit is there for all of us to tap into and when we move by the spirit and we led by the spirit he takes us from glory to glory who wants to be used by God okay so this is in the book of Acts but there was quote in the book of Joel let's go to Joel we got a little more time and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit don't this sound familiar did you know this thing confirms itself Written in different, different countries and different dates and time with different authors, all inspired by God. 
And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servant and on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whatever cause that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Praise God. Now why is this so significant, right? Because he said the old men will have dreams and the dream that was given to the fathers, right? But watch this. So when you look at the Bible and you look at the Quran, the Quran references you back to the Torah. So when you look at the Torah, you look at the book of Joel, the Joel was an Old Testament prophet. Now, even though he wasn't in the Torah, he was in the Tanakh. So the Tanakh was 24 books, right? The Torah was five books. Remember, there's no such thing as coincidence, right? So the five, the Torah, that's the Old Testament, that's in our Bible too, those same books. So you look at the five, five is the number of grace. You look at the Tanakh, that's 24 books. So that grace, two, is agreement. Four is the completion of the material universe. The number on the fourth day is when the material universe was completed. That's where we get the seasons from. Amen? So when you look at five, the number of grace, you got the grace to come into agreement with the seasons. Seasons shift, right? So there was no greater shift than the Old Testament to the New Testament. Now you have works, now you have grace, amen? Yeah. Old Testament revealing the New Testament, the New Testament revealing the Old Testament, the Old Testament concealing the New Testament, because Jesus is all over the Old Testament, amen? But when you read the whole Bible, you can see, oh, Isaiah 53, crucifixion. Oh, Psalms 22, oh, that's the crucifixion. You look, oh, oh a shoot will rise from the, sh the, from the uh, a sprout will rise from the shoot of justice. Oh, that's Jesus. Jesus was come from Jesse, David, that same lineage, right? So you look at this, all right, so then the Bible is 66 books. So five, the number of graves come into agreement with the seasons. Now, seasons coexist, right? That goes into summer to winter. They don't beef with each other. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, I don't know, Pastor New Orleans. Like, <laughs> New Orleans don't want to let winter breathe, you know what I mean? Summer, no, no. They all come together. We know when this season's over, we can expect this next season. So by it being the 5 and the 24, it was preparing us for this new season, which was Jesus Christ that came and died for our sins, that he desires relationship with his children. Amen. So now it's 66. So 6 is the number of man for man. So we have the grace to come into agreement with the seasons. Starts with me, but it's for you. The son of man didn't come to be served. He came to serve. That's right. I got saved for y'all. If I didn't get saved, who would I be pouring into? But it started with me. I had to get saved before I can pour into my brother. So now I have purpose. Now I know why I'm saved because I've been given the ministry of reconciliation to seek and save the lost. And I can't do it in my own might, and it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. So now, Christ, the mystery unto the Gentiles, Christ in you is the hope of glory. So now when I understand this and I'm filled with the spirit of God, I can't move by fear. I can't be depressed. I can't be oppressed because I got the spirit of the living God inside of me. Amen. So now I will go rush the gates of hell and claim territory and victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You were saved for a purpose. Amen. But it's the whole gospel that brings salvation. We don't want to get dropped off at the Torah. So why is this so relevant? Because when the Muslims study the Tanakh, they lead in the book of Job was in precise the timeline in the book of Job was consistent with the timeline in the Torah so they're reading it but they don't want to take it as validated as really being truth and now he's giving them dreams <laughs> and now he's giving them dreams with the same book that they already read but now he's revealing who the Lord is oh bro bro hold up man man is my God not so perfect Yep, we got time. Yeah. Come on. 
I don't know if we got time because these are the days. These skies are going to crack, amen. But we need to be in that number, amen. <laughs> now watch this. Calm down, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Do y'all remember uh, Pastor Dustin up here praying for Israel? And we didn't just pray for Israel. We prayed for Hamas too. Come on. God wanted, well, his wish is that none shall perish. We're praying that Israel, Israelites come into the realization that their eyes are open and realize that they've been sitting next to the well, and it's Jesus Christ. Amen? And if he opens up their eyes on the other side, then when they bring death, it's only salvation because we don't die. We pass over into eternity. Amen? Now, the beautiful thing that the Tanakh is the main book of the Israelites. So the Israelites read the whole thing. So the Israelites take the book of Joel to be true. So if they're reading that and they're seeing what's going on over here and it's pointing to Jesus and the Israelites really realize Jesus Christ is king and his Lord and they come into their fullness, then pop, skies crack. Wow, what's hell? You made it. Like, we're going to get caught up in the sky. Can you, or do you feel like you're going to be in that? Some of y'all are like, I don't know. I need a little time, Pastor. <laughs> well, look, we ain't got no time, church. So it's time right now. If you're not ready to get ready, if you're not ready to lean in, if you're not ready, it's hard and not your heart. Receive them with your whole heart. No more Sunday religion. No more a form of godliness. No more, I'm going to say the right thing but do the wrong thing. No, this is all or nothing. Give him all of you. Because he, he's right there willing and ready and wanting to give you all of him. Everything you need is in Jesus. The world is a liar. The devil is a liar. I, I, I got more, but I just, feel it, I just feel the spirit right now. You need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord for real. You need to stop with one hand. You need to, you, you need to say, you know what, that's it. I'm about to give you everything, God. Because when you look at... Let me, let me keep going real quick. Luke 21, 25 to 28. And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity to see and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. This is what's happening right now. These are the days. This is what it's talking about in Luke 21. And it's funny, you talked about the woman with the two mice. That was in the beginning of, of Luke 21. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory now when these things begin to happen look up lift up your heads because your redemption draws near when you see these things happening look up your redemption draws near. This is what we live. These are the days that we live for. I, when I first gave my life to Christ, I'm like, man, why I couldn't be born 2,000 years ago and run with you and Paul and Peter? I'd have cut the other ear off Jesus. Like, I really wanted to be there with him. And I really feel in my spirit, he said, no, but you might be there for when I return. I, I'm telling y'all. And I said, oh, the sky's going to crack. Oh, well, Pastor said it's going to be the end of the world Tuesday and we're still here. He's a, he's a false prophet. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I live like that. I live in the matter that I'm ready for him to come when he comes. I ain't got to say, hold on, let me put my shoes on. Right. No, I go to sleep with my sneakers on. I'm ready. Are you ready? I don't really go to sleep with my When I first went to jail, I used to, you know, I, I, when I first went to jail, I, was sitting, I, I stayed with my shoes on So, because I seen somebody get slid wearing their slides. No, 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 no. <laughs> he wasn't ready. He got slid. I said, that is not going to be me. I'm going to keep my shoes on. And, and that's how I do this walk. I stay strapped up and ready for war. Men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming. Check this out. Rates of clinical depression have been rising steadily in the U.S., but jumped notably in recent years. The Gallup data shows per 2023. The Forbes just published this. Massive health wake-up call. Depression and anxiety rates have increased by 25% this year. 
this past year. So let's go back to the word. Men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man. Come. Well, these are the days, y'all. These are the days and grab strength from Romans 5, 20 to 21. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. These things are happening, but there's more grace for us to tap into. When you go back to the book of Job chapter 2, and he said he's pouring his spirit upon all flesh. In Job chapter 1, the locust was eating everything up. And he said, what this locust didn't eat up, he sent the other locust to eat up. And what that locust didn't eat up, he sent the other locust to eat up to where everything was destroyed. Maybe that's how you feel like in your life. This goes wrong. Now this going, the locust then ate this. Now the locust is eating that. Now the locust is eating this. Oh, but there's a promise if you keep reading. There's a promise if you keep living. There's a promise if you keep believing. Because when you get to chapter 2, he starts, he said, I will restore the years that the kink of worm has stolen. The locusts have stolen things from your life, have stolen peace, have stolen things. Well, I'm here to tell you, God will restore. And we're in a time where he's pouring out his spirit. These are the times right now that's pregnant with possibility. So everything you lost, but it happened with repentance. In Joel chapter 2, everything was called to repentance. There was called to fast. I don't know who's fasting right now, amen? But you're right in alignment with the word that's being preached. And this word was released in the book of Job when he said he's going to make the rain come in the same season, the former and the latter, within the same month. That means he's going to do it all quick. So I don't know what you're in expectation for. I don't know what you lost expectation for. But I pray that today gave birth of a brand new expectation that you will no longer be defeated and you will know God is real. You will stand on his word. You will hold on to the hope that is found in Christ Jesus and it shall be revealed because he's not man that should lie and his promises are Amen. It started with repentance. So I want to give this opportunity right now. Come forward. Say, you know what? I want to be ready. You know what? I'm in expectation. You know what? No more excuses. You know what? Man, I, I did that before, but nah, man, just in case, I'm giving them everything. I'm pouring it all out at the altar right now. I don't want none of me, and I want all of him. I want God to use me like never before. I want to empty myself of myself because some, so, so, some people are too filled with themselves. They can't get filled with the spirit because there's no room. So I, I want to pour out. All of my expectation and hold on to his expectation. How do you know what that is? He's going to reveal it to you and there's going to be a confirmation and a peace attached to it that surpasses all natural understanding. So if you know you need to rededicate, come up here right now. You know if you need to repent, come up here right now. If you're just ready to say, you know what, I, I just, I believe these are the days and, you know, I, I want everything that he has to offer me. I want him to use me as he pleases. I want him to use me how he desires to use me. No longer what I desire, like God, use me like this or God, I want to do this. No, no, no. God, what shall you have me do? God, I'm ready. I'm ready to serve. Use me as a vessel. Amen. If, if, if there's anybody else, anybody left back there, go ahead, tap your neighbor and say, come on, I'm going to walk up there with you. We're going to go up there together. This is putting feet with your faith. This is humbling yourself so God can exalt. Because he said, if you exalt yourself, he will humble you. The same, oh, you ain't got to do all that. Oh, you ain't got to get up there. Oh, you, you know, oh, you did that before. That's the same coward that's going to say, you should have went up there. Everything might have changed. You know, this is you coming into agreement with the word of God. There's like, I, I received that word. I believe that word. I need that in my life. Amen. I believe these are the days I want to be prepared. Man, and, and just in case I wasn't ready, let me go up there and get some Holy Ghost insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to miss out. I'm telling you, I used to go to every altar call. Amen. After a word like that, receiving, because I believe God, want, I know God wants to use everybody that's here right now. Because you didn't wake yourself up. 
You didn't wake yourself up. God woke you up with a purpose, amen. And you're hearing these things so you could dissect the word, you could get in the word so you could be ready to respond when people have questions. So you'll know what you're talking about and you'll talk with a confidence. And they're like, well, man, she, she's so confident. It must be real. Let me, let me do my own research just in case I missed it. And I'll be like, no, no, you missed it. <laughs> it's, it's Jesus. It's no other way. There's no, there's, no, there's no messenger for every community. There's only one, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And he's calling you unto relationship with him. Praise God. Praise All right. Y'all repeat after me with authority and conviction, with your whole heart, because mouth can say anything. Whew. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. We believe, we believe that, you that you died, crucified, crucified. And, you and you rose again on the third day, the third day. through the power through the, power through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Coward, devil, Coward devil, get under my feet. Under my feet. You, have no you have no authority. I have authority, I have authority. Through, the through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Today, Today I, repent I repent of all my sins. All my, sins. My, life my life is no longer, is no longer my, own. my own. It's yours, Lord. Lord. Lead me. And I will follow. In Jesus' name, we pray. And let the church scream, amen. amen. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor and glory. Father, Father, we thank you for those Muslims that, that you have given a dream to, Father. I pray that they will just go out, Lord, and they will just begin to speak of your goodness, Father God. We pray for a mighty move of God, Father, that you would just bring an increase, Father. We pray for the Israelites, that they will come to the knowledge of knowing that you were the one true God, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the Muslims that gave their life to Christ because they're no longer Muslims, Father God, because they said yes to you, Lord Jesus. So so we pray that you will move through that place like never before. We pray that you'll move through this West Bank like never before. Everywhere that we tread our feet, we declare it as holy ground. Father, we stand in expectation of a mighty move of God. Father, use us for your glory, Father God. Lord, I thank you for everyone here that covets gifts, Father, because your word says to covet the gifts, but you will show us a more excellent way. So I pray that you would show every individual here a more excellent way, and you will lead and direct their steps along with their stops and you will close doors they're not strong enough to close on their own and you will open up a double door before them giving them the instructions of where to go and where not to go father use them for your glory father God we thank you I speak knowledge wisdom understanding of your word like never before may it be increased we rebuke the devourer coward devil you cannot steal a seed that went forward today we declare and decree that the seed has gone forward fell into fertile soil and shall produce great fruit. Father, have your way in our lives. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let the church say...